Howdy there once again, YouTube. Dang it, looks like I just missed a uh, Old Faithful eruption. Oh well. First off, if this video or intro is too long for you, then please look at the parts section in the description box below. My name is Ben Ferriolo, and I study seismic data. If you have not seen my most recent video that I uploaded this morning, please go check that out now. It was not mainly for YouTube, but also meant to be posted to the new page on my website that is coming out in about two days or so. This video shows, not this video here, but the most recent video, shows the seismic audio for 18 rapid fire swarms that have occurred in and around West Thumb and Yellowstone Lake from 2014 through 2018. Those 18 swarms shown will also be the 18 shown on my website. The new page for these swarms took me almost two weeks to compile the data for, so it will definitely contain some goodies. If you have not already, please scroll through the description box below and look for my website link which resides right below my email address. So, in the past day or so, there has been some interesting activity. First off, in the past day, there have been four earthquakes in and around Yellowstone, 0 0.3 at 5.0, 1.5 at 13.2 kilometers in depth, 0 0.6 at 5.3 kilometers in depth, and just a few minutes ago, I just noticed there's a magnitude 2.1 at 7.3 kilometers in depth. And let's go here. Let's see. Yep, you can see a few of these earthquakes on Seismic Station YHL. You see this tag down here, UUSS will be transitioning, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk about that in just a second, but you do see a few earthquakes throughout the day. This was definitely probably around a magnitude 2.0 to 2.2. So let's check out the data for this just real quick. Here we have Seismic Station, YMC, the past one day's worth of seismic data added to the Seismic Program Swarm. Let's go down real quick. This was, I believe, the 1.5, magnitude 1.5. And let's real quick do 95 and turn persistent rescale off. There we go. Let's zoom in right here. Mid-range frequencies. I had a weird blob on top. It almost looks like a snowman. Doesn't it kind of look like a very sad, strangely shaped snowman? By the way, they are predicting snow for Seattle in the next two days, so me and my daughter and my son, we are quite excited. My fiance really couldn't care less about snow. I mean, she thinks it's kind of cool, but me, I love snow. I'm literally like a kid when it snows. All right, guys, here is the teleseism, the teleseismic seismic signature of the magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico that occurred not too long ago, which I will talk about in just a moment, went up to 1,500 amplitude count on seismic station YMC. Pretty strong, guys, pretty strong. And you can tell the dominant low frequency is indicative of a teleseismic event. And I did that wrong. Yep, below one hertz. Usually, uh, teleseisms, the farther away they are, they usually are down here somewhat around 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 hertz. But usually when they're somewhat close, like in southern Mexico near the Guatemala-Mexican border, usually we see dominant frequencies between about 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 hertz, possibly going up to about 1 hertz, but frequencies usually stay below 1 hertz with teleseisms, usually. And here are the other earthquakes that have occurred. Two microquakes, very tiny. And then there's some more popping throughout the day, very tiny. This one only going to about 600 amplitude count at 1739 UTC. Here's another one right there. Another very tiny one right there. Another one right there. Multiple ones throughout the day. That right here is another teleseism, I believe, but do not hold me accountable on that. And here's the magnitude 2.1 that just struck at, I believe they said 7.3 kilometers in depth. Here's the spectrogram. Notice dominant frequencies seem to remain below 15 hertz, but I do not like to use the spectrogram only for dominant frequencies, so we got to check out the spectra. 15 hertz would be right here. Notice I said dominant frequencies remain below 15 hertz, but actually it's more like they remain below 10 hertz. So, very interesting. Turn back on spectrogram, log power, log frequency. So we did just see a magnitude 2.1. Alrighty, so there's a few other things to talk about today though. Now, I saw this earthquake here this morning, right when I woke up. Notice that? I was like, hey, it's been a few days since we've seen one. This was apparently a magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico. Now, I will get to that in just a second. However, notice this note at the bottom. It says UUSS will be transitioning to SSL on February 5th, 
2019, which is in about four days from now. Links may break. And I thought, what the heck does that even mean? What do they mean by that? Well, apparently it doesn't mean too much. I emailed the University of Utah and this is what they said. So I emailed them and I said, hello, I rarely use the online helicorder charts except for quick overview. I noticed today there was a statement on the bottom of all helicorders that says UUSS will be transitioning to SSL on February 5th, 2019. Links may break. What does this mean? I use seismic analysis programs to analyze Yellowstone's data in the WYPB networks. Since I gather all of my data from Iris F. DSN, WS, Data Select, will this change on 2019, February 5th, affect the data streams themselves, or is it only for the online helicorders? Thank you much, Ben Ferriolo. Then webmaster at size.utah.edu said, Ben, this effect will not affect, or this change, excuse me, will not affect the data streams at all. It only affects the webby quarters, the online helicorders. Most people won't notice a difference, but there are a few who gather the images of our webby quarters that might. Webmaster. I, apparently, I'm not supposed to say online helicorders. Apparently, it's webby quarters. But guys, I have a secret. They're still helicorders. <laughs> so it seems this change will not be very detrimental to how I do things. Apparently some helicorders or webicorders may go in and out, but hopefully it isn't too crazy. Now let's real quick talk about the magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico. So it was reportedly a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake at 67.9 kilometers in depth on February 1st, 2019 at 1614 UTC. It struck in Chiapas. Did I say that right? See, Chiapas, please let me know if I said that right. And it was actually very close to the coast and to the Guatemala border. Although the epicenter is not crazy close, it is somewhat close to the Fuego Volcano in Guatemala. The Fuego Volcano is a very dangerous stratovolcano, and from recent webcam views, it appears to be getting more active. Could this magnitude 6.6 .6 affect the volcano in Guatemala? I think it can. And then again, you can see it occurred right here. Now here's the event page for the magnitude 6.6 .6 that struck at 67.9 kilometers in depth, on February 1st, 2019 at 1614 UTC. 323 people reported feeling this event. Remember, these are only the reports to USGS. That means when you see this number is usually much, much higher because not everybody knows how to report an earthquake or even knows where or even cares to. But I do suggest if you ever feel an earthquake, please do not hesitate to report it. And down here we have the moment tensor. Again, looks like a normal tectonic event. I'm still learning moment tensors, guys. But remember, we saw a uh, moment tensor for the magnitude 4.6 in Maryland. Go to my Seismo blog if you want to hear about that. Um, it looked like a collapse event. It really did look like a collapse event because it, it looked kind of like a fried egg. This is kind of like what a moment tensor should really look like. By the way, check this out. Estimated economic losses is in the yellow. It should be in the green for both of these, but they're both in the yellow. Estimated fatalities, they are thinking possibly a few people did die. And look at this, ground failure, landslides, little or no area affected. This is normal. This is not normal. Liquefaction, it says significant area affected for liquefaction. Significant population exposed. So apparently this earthquake could have caused some a good amount of liquefaction, which is where the dirt kind of mixes with the groundwater a little bit and kind of turns into kind of quicksand type of substance. It's very weird. Here is Seismic Station MCID. I just wanted to show you the teleseismic signature of the magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico. And here it is right here. Again, dominant low frequencies as we should see. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Here is the teleseismic signature from the magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico. I am unsure what this is specifically right there. Yeah, it carries dominant low frequencies. Okay, so that could be part of the event too. Except I am not really knowing what this is right here. Could this be an aftershock? But it's carrying too low of frequencies. I, I don't know. I, I'm actually confused as to what that is right there. Remember, I don't know everything, guys. I still have a lot to learn. And yeah, so that is the magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico. Showed up quite strong on these seismic stations at Yellowstone. Almost going to about 3,000 amplitude count. That's pretty strong, guys, for a teleseism. That's pretty strong. 
Now let's go down. There's the surface wave. Extends for a great amount of time. Stops right about here. So let's say 1646 is when the surface wave stops. This started at about 1620. So if we said 1626, which would be all the way up here, that would be 20 minutes. But it started right about here. So let's just say about 25 minutes. This Telus seismic signature lasted for 20 five minutes that's pretty long guys and up here we see another earthquake i believe this one occurred in soda springs i'm not sure it has a strange look to it though very very strange and these events right here i thought these were earthquakes these don't really look like earthquakes at all what is this you see this what is that they look like electronic malfunctions or surface noise, but they also kind of look like earthquakes, and they're not really showing up well on surrounding seismic stations, so I am not ready to say what these are quite yet. Yeah, that's very strange, very strange. So I don't know what that is quite yet, but again, I only wanted to show you the teleseismic signature, and there it is. Check out the dominant frequencies just real quick. We already did this on YMC for this signature, but I just want to do it again press OK. It's going a little bit above 1 hertz. It looks like it stops at about 1.4 hertz and starts at about 0.2 hertz. That's a very broad range, very broad range. So now before I get to the main topic, I would like to point out this earthquake here in Australia. Notice we have Australia right here all the way to the west. What is this little puppy dog sitting right here? Just right off the coast. Look at that. This earthquake struck off the western coast of Australia and was reportedly a magnitude 4.5 earthquake, supposedly at 10.0 kilometers in depth. It struck on February 1st, 2019 at 828 UTC. Now, this isn't too rare, guys. Australia does have magnitude 4 earthquakes every now and then. But I haven't seen any the past few weeks, few weeks ago actually, and even a few months before that, there was a good amount of magnitude 4.0 earthquakes happening in Australia. I thought that was very strange. And by the way, is it true that Australia has volcanoes? I mean, I could easily look that up right now, but I don't really have time to. So let me know what you know about the Australia volcanic activity, because I bet it does have volcanoes. Everywhere's got volcanoes. I mean, our whole planet is pretty volcanic. Here's the event page for the magnitude 4.5, supposedly at 10.0 kilometers in depth, again striking off the western coast of Australia, just barely off the coast. Now, only one person reported feeling this earthquake. Now, where were they? And now only one person felt it, and apparently they were right down here, this area right here. I'm really thinking more people felt this, but I don't know if Australia, I don't know if they actually report to USGS. On here so only one person reported viewing it let's check out the seismic data real quick here we are at seismic station girl in the AU network I know kind of a funny name for a seismic station huh <laughs> all right starting off this is completely unfiltered persistent rescale is off as usual let's go to the spectrogram first and zoom out zoom out on the whole shebang right there now let's select the entire event from start to finish Looks like it ends right about there. Pretty long earthquake. I'm going to say last in maybe 15 minutes or so. is very long, very long. But the main power of the earthquake lasted only, I'm going to say, two minutes maybe, two or three minutes. And here it is right here. Notice there is a third burst in energy. Now we can see the clear P wave. The P wave is always the first wiggle, the first wave that you see arrive on a seismic station for an earthquake. The S wave is a little bit harder to find, but you can see the S wave is right about here. Now I'm thinking these could be surface waves, but I don't know. I mean, the frequencies are lower, yes, and they do kind of carry the same characteristics as surface waves, but they seem a little too strong. Notice that? Look at this. You can see clearly three here. There's the P wave which is where we should see an increase in energy. Here's the S wave right around this area, which is where we should see a secondary increase in energy. And of course, large earthquakes do carry surface waves with them. But I don't know. I don't think these are surface waves. I think this is a second earthquake. Let's look at the spectrogram real quick. I just want to look at this. Look right here. You see that? I'm thinking there were two earthquakes around the same magnitude, possibly. Unless it really is just the surface waves. 
So I don't know, that's still up in the air. Let's check the dominant frequencies of this magnitude 4.5 in Australia. Check out the dominant frequencies remain below. They remain below about 5.4 hertz. This seismic station was actually not too far from this event. So I'm very confused as to why it is showing such, look at this. The low frequency started at 0.2 hertz. I believe this is caused by the background microseisms caused by the ocean and the earth itself. So I'm thinking this is about from 0.9 hertz all the way to about again 5.9 to 6 hertz. Very interesting. Frequencies are much lower than what I would expect even from a distant seismic station. Again, this seismic station is not that far away but still it should be showing slightly higher frequencies. Don't know what this was caused by. A very strange looking earthquake. Let's zoom in on it. Now I would like to conduct a 0.7 hertz high pass filter. Straighten it out a little bit more. There's the P and S wave arrivals. And that's it for the magnitude 4.5 in Australia. Again, there is the magnitude 4.5. Zooming in, zooming in. Three increases in energy. Again, we should only see two usually. Could be surface wave, but I don't know. It's up in the air. Now, let's move on to the main thing I wanted to talk about in this video. Now, the main thing I wanted to talk about today are these two earthquakes here near Gypsum. You notice that? We're in Colorado. Two near Glenwood Springs. If you follow my videos and my website closely, this will probably bring back some memories for you. Now, notice how it said that it occurred close to Glenwood Springs. Well, why is that important? Because, remember how in this video shown here called Colorado Volcano Quakes Increase, Tennessee magnitude 4.4 quake and aftershocks. Notice how this video, I warned people to keep an eye on seismic activity near Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Now, why did I say that? Well, for a full explanation and some good info, please come watch this video here. I will put a link to it in the description box below. Again, why should we monitor the Glenwood Springs, Colorado area? Why is it so important? Well, it is because of this Colorado volcano here. Yes, Colorado does have a volcano and the threat level, notice it says moderate instead of extinct. That means it is highly likely there is still a magma system in this area. Of course, Dote Zero is somewhat to the east of Glenwood Springs. You can see Dote Zero is right here and right next to Gypsum. Gypsum is actually right here at the volcano. Glenwood Springs and Newcastle is where we've been seeing that seismicity, right in this area. So just to the west. Again, Dote Zero is somewhat to the east of Glenwood Springs, but apparently magma meeting the water table is how the Dote Zero eruption occurred. Well, at least part of it. So that magma and that water is still down there and still could create the potential for this to happen again sometime in the future. I don't know when, but there is a chance it could happen again. I know I already read about this in my older video, but I will read it again. Dot Zero Crater near the Dot Zero Railroad Junction in Central, <laughs> excuse me, Central Colorado is one of several volcanic features resulting from basaltic eruptions between 3,800 and 5,500 years ago. The earliest eruptions occurred along a north-northeast trend and built scoria cones that ascend the North Canyon Wall of the Eagle River near where it joins the Colorado River. And Aa. An AA, I think that's what it's called, an AA lava flow issued southward from a gulch and buried about 168 acres of the adjacent floodplain. Today, U.S. Interstate Highway 70 cuts this lava flow. Dotsiro Crater formed when magma encountered water and explosively blasted a crater through the country rock, destroying part of the scoria cone chain and showering tephra, which is another type of ash, kind of, across the landscape. This tephra fallout includes a substantial amount of red sandstone bedrock fragments. Although 65 feet or thicker around the vent, much of the tephra was blown eastward from the crater by prevailing winds. The crater today has a diameter of about 2,460 feet and a depth of about 250 feet at low rim points. When first formed, the crater was possibly as deep as 1,300 feet, but has since been partly filled. Again, Glenwood Springs, Dote Zero, Gypsum, and Eagle Towns are the closest towns. 
So that is why I like to keep a close eye on this area. Now it says two earthquakes have struck this area in about the past day or two. Now it may not seem like much, but keep in mind it does seem like seismicity has been increasing for this area, albeit quite slowly. I'll show you that in just a second. But first let's look at the magnitude 2.2 at 5.0 kilometers in depth which struck on January 31st, 2019 at, what was it again? I think it said 1012 UTC, right? Yes, 1012 UTC. And apparently one person did report feeling it. And let's check out where they were when they felt it. For some reason, I cannot find the felt report. There was one felt report, but I cannot find the box. I cannot find where this person was, so I'm just going to say nobody felt it. Now, a little bit less than 24 hours after that, there was a magnitude 3.1 that struck just to the south at 1.9 kilometers in depth. It struck on February 1st, 2019 at 8.58 UTC. Let's check out the event page. Let's see how many people felt this. 54 people reported feeling this earthquake. That's a good amount of people for a magnitude 3.1, guys. Plus, they said it was pretty shallow at 1.9 kilometers in depth. Let's look where all of these event reports were. Let's scoot in. Looks like the majority of them were around the epicenter with a few down near Aspen, just to the southeast. Let's look at this. Yeah, most of them were around the epicenter but one down here as well, but 54 people reported feeling it. Remember, that is only the people who reported this to USGS. The actual count of people who actually felt it usually are probably much higher than the actual felt count. Okay, here is all of the seismicity for the Dote Zero Volcano and Glenwood Springs area from right now all the way back to January 1st, 2000. Over 19 years worth of seismicity right here just for this box right in this area. I will prove to you that it seems that seismicity is increasing for this area. Just going to turn on terrain real quick just so you can see where most of the earthquakes occurred. want to let you know Dote Zero is right here, right in this area. And But the magma system, I bet, is very drawn out and so is the water table. So it could have moved, it could have shifted in those thousands of years that it didn't erupt, because it's been a few thousand years since it's erupted, guys. But still, we still should watch out for an increase in seismicity, and there has been a good amount in this area right here. Again, please see my video, a link is in the description box below, and I looked at some of the seismic signatures for some of the even, even the older earthquakes, which I'm not going to do in this video, but I did do in that older video. But still, right now... Let's go down. Let's see what the counts were for each year. There was one earthquake in 2000. One, two, three, four in 2001. Scroll up. One, two in 2002. One in 2003. One in 2004. One in 2005. One in 2006. One in 2009. Let's scroll up. Two in 2010. One in 2012, one, uh, two, two in 2014, still nothing major, one in 2015, and let's scroll up, next is 2016, let's see how many happened in 2016, one, two, three in 2016, so it seems to be increasing, one, two, three in 2017, now check this out. Here's 2018. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight for 2018. So in the past 19 years, 2018 has seen the highest count of seismicity. But look at this. In my video, I did talk about the earthquake swarm. Yes, there was a minor earthquake swarm near this area with some good-sized magnitudes, too. Look, on the same date, on December 11th, 2018, between 10 and 12 UTC, there were three reported earthquakes, but there were also a few other ones that were not reported that were much smaller. And look at this. These two occurred within two minutes of each other. And overall, there were about five earthquakes within about two hours or something like that. So again, it was not a major swarm by any count, but the magnitudes were slightly larger than what you should expect. 
and they were very strange very strange guys so this right here on december 11 2018 was the highest intensity of seismicity that i could find for the past 19 years and even the time period before that even for the 90s and 80s i tried looking at seismic activity in this area didn't really find anything much until 2018. so why is activity increasing in 2018 and now in 2019 we have two to add and the year is just getting started could 2019 beat the record of eight earthquakes in one year yes that is the record right now the record right now is eight earthquakes in one year which occurred in 2018 near this area right here the majority of the seismicity occurs right here few earthquakes occur up here but the events that you see down here that I, sh I showed a couple in my video, again, link below in the description box. I believe those are unrelated, but I believe these right here, the f look at how it forms a circle. See how these events right here, boom, and then go around leading to gypsum or Dotsero volcano and gypsum. And notice how it almost forms a circle. If you were to put Dotsero right in the middle of these two dots, it forms a circle. Notice that? Look at that right there. And then there's another one right there, and there, and there, and there. And then down here, it almost forms a circle. Very interesting, with the majority of the seismicity happening pretty much in the center of the circle. I thought that was very interesting. So again, why is seismicity increasing for this area, with 2018 seeing the highest count? Now let's real quick look at the past day and a half or so of seismic activity for the closest seismic station to Glenwood Springs and Dote Zero. The closest seismic station resides right in this area, right about here. Yes, seismic monitoring in this area is terrible. The second closest seismic station is like way down here. And this volcano is currently unmonitored. They still think that it could potentially be active, but they're not monitoring it, especially with an increase in seismicity. If anybody's watching this who has the ability to put out seismic instruments in any given location, especially this area, please, let's put some extra seismic stations out here just in case. It couldn't hurt. Here we are in the program swarm. I have opened the data for about the past day and a half or so for station O20A in the N4 network. It is a broadband station, so we're going to add a 0.7 hertz high pass filter, but I am not going to add that filter yet. But I'm going to turn persistent rescale off, add that to 95. So again, I'm not filtering it just yet, but I will soon. Let's go to the spectrogram. This is a teleseism right there obviously you can tell let's go forward and see if there's any earthquakes this is much before the uh earthquakes that i'm going to look at that occurred in the past day what is this event right here now let's add that filter just real quick press ok looks like there was a tiny event right there could have been a teleseism but it doesn't look like it so i don't know what that was let's take off the filter real quick and go back now let's keep going forward i'm just looking for any unreported events in the past day and a half to two days let's keep going through keep going through not seeing too much background noise this strange rhythmic signal keep going forward keep going forward keep going forward still not seeing too much guys Yeah, still not seeing much. Nothing yet, huh? So when did that earthquake happen? The first earthquake, the 2.2, let's see. 2.2 occurred on the 31st at 10. The 31st at 10. So, okay, so we're almost there. We're almost to the first earthquake. Is this it? Is that it? Hold on. Let's check the times real quick. Let's check the times. It says it occurred at 10, 12, 51. So let's say about 10, 13. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay. So let's check it out. This is the magnitude 2.2. Yes, magnitude 2.2 at 5.0 kilometers in depth. Let's add the 0 0.7 hertz high pass filter. Wow. This is just like all of the other earthquakes that have occurred in this area. Now, please, if you want to understand what I mean by that, please go watch the video in the description box below that has to do with the Dote Zero Volcano. 
please go watch that because a lot of these earthquakes that occur near Glenwood Springs have this same exact characteristic. They seem very emergent and have this strange tremor-like quality to them. They're obviously still earthquakes, but they're very, very peculiar earthquakes indeed. Definitely nothing, definitely does not look like normal tectonic activity. I'm not saying it's magma intrusion or that magma's doing this for sure, but again, there is a magma system in the area and seismicity is increasing, so that really wouldn't be too much of a stretch. Let's see the dominant frequencies, shall we? Dominant frequencies are very broad, very broad. We see a weakening around 15 hertz, but beyond that, it's definitely a high frequency event. No dominant low frequencies, which is what I usually like to check out. Now, let's take off the filter. Let's take that off and let's go through again. So we just looked at the 2.2 that they reported at 5.0 kilometers in depth. Let's go forward. Are there any other unreported events? Any other ones at all? Let's keep going forward. Not seeing too much, not seeing too much. Now let's scroll down. I'm gonna to try to do this much quicker. So let's go forward. Let me know if I miss anything, but I don't think, oh, what is this right here? Let's turn on that high pass filter just real fast. Looks like there was a very tiny, tiny microquake right there, unless that's part of a teleseism, but that does look pretty strange. That looks very strange too. What is that? But it doesn't really show in the spectrogram, so let's go forward. Let's go forward, shall we? I still have the high pass filter on, so I'm going to take that off. Again, I'm just seeing if there were any unreported earthquakes besides the 2.2 and the, what was it, 3.1, I think they called it. I think they said it was a 3.1 that we have yet to look at. The 3.1 occurred on, uh, sorry, February 1st, 2019 at 8.58, so we're not quite there yet. Keep going forward, keep going forward. Not seeing any other unreported earthquakes. So they're doing a pretty good job at reporting the seismicity, so far at least, so far. I'm only looking for unreported earthquakes. What is this right here? Let's go forward just a little bit. See, that definitely looks like some type of teleseism right there. Yes, that definitely looks like a teleseism. Yep, that is. Now let's keep going forward. Just a little bit more data, guys. Just a little bit more. Not seeing much, not seeing much, not seeing much. There's probably a little tiny microquake there. Uh, is this another earthquake right here? Let's turn on the... Yes, yep. There's another earthquake right here. Very tiny though, only going to about 200 amplitude count. But again, I'm going to say probably a magnitude 0 0.5 maybe, or even maybe a little bit smaller than that. But still, let's go forward. So it seems like there was another one or two microquakes that did occur. Looks like there's another one right here. Unless that looks more like a regional earthquake, actually. That looks more like a distant earthquake. All right, let's keep going forward, keep going forward. Remember, 858 is when the reported magnitude 3.1 occurred. Not seeing too much else, not seeing too much else. Sorry, guys, that this is taking forever, but I am going through pretty much every single bit of data that I have on here. That is not what I wanted to do. To save on time, let's go quicker and quicker and quicker. Yeah, there could have been a few other tiny microquakes throughout the day, but nothing too notable. Here it is, right here. Okay, let's pan this forward, or scoot it forward a little bit, sorry. Again, what you're about to see is the magnitude 3.1 at 1.9 kilometers in depth, somewhat near the Dode Zero volcano, again with the same characteristics that kind of look like a steamboat eruption. Obviously, it's not, but I'm just saying the characteristics of the waveforms do look somewhat similar. Again, this is a very peculiar, almost emergent type of earthquake. I don't know why the Dode Zero and Glenwood Springs area is seeing these same exact earthquakes. Yes, again, if you want to see them, please go in the description box below and watch that video. I have posted my old video. Yes, characteristics are exactly the same.
all of these earthquakes in this area look exactly identical. So I'm not seeing too much else. Let's go forward. The most recent data streams, not seeing much. So it pretty much was just that one, except what do we have here? What is this right here? What the heck? Now I'm thinking this is some type of distant earthquake. I'm going to look into this more because I don't have too much time right now. Look at these harmonic characteristics right here. Look at that. Now let's turn log power off. Dominant frequency is below 1 hertz, so it is possible. This is a teleseism right here. It is very possible, but to me, it doesn't really look like 1. But I don't know. I will have to look into this further. As of the most recent data stream, we could have had another earthquake around 1952. So I will check that out right now. Again, here is the teleseism to the magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico. There it is right there. I got some stuff to do, so I got to go. Here we are at the Old Faithful webcam, which resides within the Upper Geyser Basin. Keep an eye on Colorado seismicity, guys. If I ever miss talking about an earthquake that occurred near Glenwood Springs, please let me know. Also, if any of my videos or any content on my website contains any mistakes, please do not hesitate to tell me about it. I also hope that you enjoyed this video and my many other videos. Again, I suggest that you guys check out the somewhat recent video I put out about the Dozero Volcano in Colorado. Again, a link is posted below. I will be putting out a very quick video once the new page on my website is completed, but after that, the next video will be the monthly volcano report that I put out every month. It takes a good two days to finish, and I haven't even started it yet, so it will hopefully be up by February 5th at the latest. So let me know what you think, and have a wonderful day. Remember, the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. God bless. Ben Ferriolo signing off.